Hey guys, welcome to the Testing Academy. My name is Pramod and in this tutorial, we are going to learn about the top black box testing technique that you should know as a QA. So let's get started. All right. All right, guys. So uh, right now, as you can see, I am in a mind map and I have uh, nearly around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven top black box testing technique that you can, you should know as a QA. All right. And trust me guys uh, whenever we are like, like taking any kind of interviews and why you should know about it is because that whenever you are creating certain kind of test cases and whenever you are creating uh, any kind of scenarios you need these techniques so that uh, you can uh, you can create a better test case you can get better test coverage right so you can apply this uh, testing techniques which basically gives you more number of test cases and you can have a good test coverage with less number of test cases all right this is the main motive of these uh, of these testing techniques all right so uh let me go let me go you one let let's go by one by one and try to understand this guy right? this is the uh, these are the techniques that are going to help you in creating test uh, scenarios test cases as well as these are the techniques that are generally asked in interviews also right so if you guys are preparing for any kind of interview this these are the techniques that you should know all right so let's get started the first one is important one which is boundary value analysis right so it basically means is that it's basically we are for focusing more on the boundaries of boundaries right so let me give an example for example we have an input box right and it can take a value from 1 to 10 right so what are the boundaries of it right so what we are doing here is that let me zoom let me zoom out here is that uh the first boundary will be one one will be your uh the first boundary and the start starting of the boundary and the 10 will be your the maximum the value that it can take right so what you are going to do is that you uh the test case whenever you're writing the test case for this simple input box how you are uh applying the black uh, boundary value analysis is that you are going to put zero you are going to put one and you are going to put two so these are the boundary of this system right and now uh since uh, these are the all positive positive uh, cases or i would say valid cases so uh, putting one or two value is just just checking out right means uh, it will not give you much of the information much of the bugs but if you are going to check again with a 9 10 and 11 then these are again the boundary values where you will get the more uh, these are like uh, these boundaries are more prominent to the bugs right so uh, why we are doing uh, boundary value analysis is that because it is found that the most of the bugs are found in boundaries, right? So these are the this is boundary value analysis and it's a type of a black box technique where we don't know about the uh, what is a black box black box testing. It's a kind of a testing where we don't know the internal architecture, but we uh, know what is the input and what is the output of the system, right? So this is this is the example this is like a simplest example of any kind of boundary value analysis that you can apply so let me give you another example for example you have a string that you want uh, for example you have an input box where you can type a string with a maximum length of 100 now your boundary values will become any kind of null value any kind of uh, uh, single character string and the maximum length of the string and maximum length plus one my maximum length minus one null zero or no value these are the boundaries values right these are the boundary values plus some invalid cases all right these are not exactly the boundary values but yeah these are the invalid cases most of them are invalid cases all right so i hope uh, now you are able to understand clearly what is the boundary value analysis right so if any time any kind of interviewer basically asks you about this you have to just give this example and explain it correctly cool now this is the important one uh, which is uh, we call it equivalence partition and lots of people don't know about it and trust me guys whenever someone asks you that what are the top uh, black book testing technique that you use everyone knows about the boundary value but lots of guys uh, miss this equivalence partition it's very simple guys it is also known as equivalence class partitioning so what is it let's start so it's basically is a system uh, let me pull out my this one it's a basically what you are doing is that your input 
input the values to the system or application and we are going to divide the inputs into a certain different classes right so what are these classes so uh, what let me give you an example right so uh, this is again an input box which can take a age of a person right it accepts a value from 18 to 56 it's a wonderful example that is shared by someone and uh, so now what we have done is that we have created three uh, three partitions of it anything less than 17 is an invalid partition anything between 18 and 56 is a valid partition and greater than uh, 57 it's an invalid partition so we have divided into three different partition it's a very different from a boundary values where we have what we are doing is that we were doing the bound we are basically testing it for the boundary values but here we are testing with a valid and invalid partition that we have created right and uh, let's again uh, take an a simple example of a mobile phone what we are doing is that uh, this is the first one is a valid number and invalid number can be uh, whenever the number is less than the 10 digits all right and the valid in uh, the next set of in invalid will be whenever we have uh, more than the more than more than 10 characters right so we have divided into three classes basically two classes valid and invalid and invalid will have two more uh, basically the lower invalid and the higher invalid right so this is the equivalence partition technique uh, you can say equivalence partition or equivalence class partition right and it's again it's a type of a black box box testing technique guys do remember this and there's a huge there's a great i would say there's a good dis, uh, good difference between both of them all right boundary values we are putting the boundary values equivalence partition class in we are creating certain partitions of a class and we are testing it out that thing cool now the pro the interesting thing starts here when we have to uh discuss about the blackboard testing technique which is decision table right guys let's let let me open up a link and show you this example let's uh, let me show you this example yeah it's opening yeah you can copy this link and uh, it's basically explain you everything about it so it is used to test the system behavior for a different input combinations cool let me zoom out uh, what we are doing is that we are testing it for a different kind of input uh, combinations right and uh, we basically going we are going to basically map the different input communication and their corresponding system behavior right so different input combinations and their system behaviors we are going to make a table out of it right and it's basically again this is another interesting point here is that it's also called as cause effect where cause and effects are basically capturing in right so that we have a better coverage let's give an example let me give you an example so that you are able to understand it clearly right it's a wonderful example suppose we have a upload photo functionality to test right and there's a, a button here let me pull up my screen row yeah so this is the this is let me pencil here so this is the upload photo and this is the button the interesting point is that you can upload only the jpj image so the first constraint condition is that only jpj image the file size should be less than the 32 kb another condition and the resolution is fixed so we have three conditions right uh, we have a condition of format which is the jpj we have a condition of a size we have a condition of resolution and we have a output what exactly we are outputting right so the case one what we are going to do is that we are going to create a table out of it right and if these are like three three important conditions and there will be two to the power three these are the number of combinations which will be eight right and these are the here it is mentioned cool the combination will be very simple jpj less than 32 uh, same resolution photo uploaded this is the valid this is the valid this is valid uh you can say valid scenario right and most of them these will be invalid scenarios whenever something is wrong right for example if it is less than 32 or the resolution is wrong the we will get an error if the size is greater we will get an error right if the resolution again it's a uh, greater we'll get an error it's not jpj it's not jpj not jpj not jpj we'll get an error so this is how you are uh, basically you have created a decision table and it's again a black box type 
black box testing technique right guys so i hope you have got uh, a great immense value from it and it's just like the simplest example to explain you the decision table so any if anyone if any of the uh, interview basically ask you about the decision table black box testing technique just give this example and you will you are good to go cool all right so let me let's uh, make it okay me one second yeah all right so this is the decision table right uh, i know the guys this is uh, a long video but you are going to get a immense value in this video right don't just uh, watch this full to full tutorial so that you get uh, the knowledge about it right so state transition again it's a black box testing technique and what we have is that let me uh, show you in a simplest way uh, it's it is used to test a uh, different states of a system right we are majorly concerned about this different type of states we have right the states basically means is that the state of a system depends on the conditions right uh, i'll give you an example so that you can understand betterly uh, better and i'm going to share this uh, full mind map with you don't worry about it and we have uh, what we have is that in the state transition testing is we have a state we have a transition we have an event any kind of event and we have a action these are the four things so let's take an example of this one this is very interesting article uh, uh you can say screen draw let me pull up this yeah so we are starting this is a flow and these are the states basically we are going to first try this is you can say an atm machine and we are entering a pin so we are doing a first try this is our first state and after that what we have done is that we have the entered our pin that is our action that we have and the transition is that if it is a correct we are granted with access but if we have an incorrect pin we have we are in a second state the second state if we put correct uh, pin then again we are access granted but if it is incorrect we are in the third try and if third try is failed incorrect we have then we are our account is blocked right so this is uh, like a uh, different states different actions that you have done and different uh, events that has been occurred whenever you are doing different kind of uh, whenever you are putting a correct or incorrect pin according to it cool so i hope uh, that is very pretty much clear about it it's a very simple example and it uh, whenever anyone basically basically ask you about this one just give this example and you are good uh, good to go right state transition testing is simplest uh, sim uh, very simple you have states you have actions you have transitions from different state to state and you are going to take a action cool all right so uh, let's cover up last three ones and these are imp again important i know it, this video is going to uh, uh, you are going to get a great value in this uh, video uh, error guessing is very important guys it's a very simple simpler black box testing technique what you do is that it's basically called as experience based testing guys so what you do is that uh, generally testers can use or uh, his or her experience about the application and behavior and uh, to guess the error prone area so for example it's very simple in one right uh, we can check for divide by zero null handling submit button not working file not uploading these are the error guessing we are just guessing that this can be an error because uh, it is due to the experience that we have already right so it's very simple uh, i don't have to give you much of example in this one but just make just uh, remember it's experience based testing where we are just ex uh, basically uh, guessing the uh, output uh, guessing the error prone areas and uh, for example we are uh, doing divide by zero if it is in certain calculations we are uh, checking for null values and different file uploads something like this all right cool uh now the interesting part uh, which is graph based testing it's again uh, very interesting type of black box testing what we do is that we basically create a graph we draw a graph by depicts the link between the cause and the effect again the concept of cause and effect it's basically an input and output so uh this is an example it's a very great example again let me screen uh, do a screen draw 
we have an employee which desired which basically wants a leave so this is a graph basically so this is this is how it go and uh, he basically try a leave application and it can have two inputs outputs right hr verify if it is eligible or not not eligible right and after that uh, manager will be ensure the feasibility if yes if not feasible reject uh, if hr has uh, basically rejected then it will also rejected if manager uh, allowed it it will be approved it is not then reject right so it's a graph basically going from here to here you can go to here these are like certain cases that you can go right so this is called as graph based testing where we have a graph links between cause and the effect guys just remember that thing cool all right uh the last one is comparison based testing which is very simple very very sim simple it basically means that we are different input different independent versions of a same software are used to compare each other on a testing method so basically what you are doing is that for example you are testing mm, uh, let me give it for example you are testing a gmail application so similar application is hotmail right uh, we have a uh, gmail alternate as a hotmail or you can say outlook right so you are going to compare the features here and comparison is all about accessing the strength and weakness of the software for example we are going to check for strength and weaknesses for gmail and it is available on our hotmail or not so that is also a kind of a testing right and this is known as comparison based testing which is a part of black box testing all right so this is a simplest example what you are doing is that compare the functionality of a software app against the standard method market and compare the specific feature of software with respect to products in the market right you are going you are just doing these things this is the comparison based testing so guys this is the seven important black box te technique that i have discussed with you with the great examples and if you have uh, found any kind of value in these videos just let me know in the comments and uh, if you have any kind of doubt uh, you can contact me anytime uh, and comment down below i'm definitely going to reply but don't forget to like share and comment guys and uh, see you in the next video this is your host pramod and have a nice day bye